Hey guys, it's Dub. I'm in my car. <laughs> I know I sound bad because I'm sick. Um, but I'm on the road to recovery. Uh, yeah, I got sick, I think, Thursday night when I was driving home. And I had a two hour um, drive home. Yeah, traffic was horrific. It, the GPS showed like an accident on every single highway. It was horrible. And uh, I started feeling bad right as I was leaving work. Just like a head kind of, you know, congested and just like, just not feeling good. I don't know where this guy's going, but he's in a hurry. Um, there's cars in front of him, so he's not going far. But, um, <coughs> that's my cough. Um, anyway, oh, he just almost hit me trying to get in front of me to just be stopped by another car that's in front of me. It is traffic time, but like I said, he's in a hurry. He almost hit the side of my car. Okay, yay. Um, great start to my drive home. Uh, this reminds me, be very careful. But anyway, um, let me stop my story for a second. Um, welcome back to my channel. If you watch my channel, this is Dub School Finds. I'm Dub. Um, my co-star is Bella, who is not with us on this um, journey because, you know, I'm leaving work. So, and she's at home, garden house. Um, but um, if you're new to my channel and you were coming here expecting a haul or different things that I do, unfortunately, no. Um, this is just one of my drive and talk with y'all as my um, my passengers in my car. So, uh, I even get bars next to me two lanes over, so he just keeps doing kind of this thing. Anyway, um, but yeah, so if you don't like just talking, somebody just jabbering, like, you know, if you don't like to listen to your best friend just talking to you on the way home, then um, this probably is not the video for you. But if you do like that, hey, woo, um, let's talk. So... <laughs> So, anyway, um, I'll continue on. Um, so, yeah, on the way home, I was feeling like crowded. And don't you hate that, like, when you just feel like starting to get sick, you know it's coming, it's not going to be good. Uh, you just want to get to your home or your couch or your bed or your loved ones or your pet or whatever. You just want to be home, and you're in this horrendous traffic jam. I mean, it normally takes me, um, well... 40 to what is it today 48 minutes or something to get home maybe an hour uh, but two hours over just a little over two hours mm -mm, mm -mm. so as i'm sitting in these just long line of traffic at one point i was on this one road um a side street gps took me on and um <coughs> sand coughing. This is definitely not the video for you. Sorry. Um, but, but to get me to the highway, that's the only way to get to my house. And the last, just the last part of it, I was literally just maybe at the most five miles from my house. Uh, and I was texting because I was in the side road. It just was stopped and then it would move like one foot and then stop. So at least we were moving, right? So the my co-worker texted me, he was like, you know, oh, are you home yet? I hope you got home safe. And I was like, no, I'm in this horrific traffic. I'm still driving. She's like, oh my God, you're still driving? I'm like, yes. And I said, the GPS says I have like 28 minutes to go and it's like five miles from the house. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. So I'm sitting there and then realizing suddenly, <coughs> suddenly we're not moving at all. I mean, literally just sitting there and it's this little two lane road and if I a lot of people are turning around and just leaving but there's nowhere else to go I mean there's only one way to get on the highway that I needed and I'm sure the other alternate route was just as packed there's no way you know where you're going um and it was miles to go back so just sitting there and then I texted her and I'm like well now I'm 30 something minutes away from my house just like how is it increasing I'm like yeah I'm stuck in no movement traffic. Very rarely where you get stuck like that for a length of time where it just doesn't move at all. Um, you literally could turn your car off and just sit there. That's how it was. Now, I finally got home after eight. I 
exhausted, tired, hungry, whatever. So, ate something quickly, went to bed. Got up Friday morning, feeling worse. Then my cough started. But I'm like, oh, I can still do this. You know, it's, it's still cool. I gotta, I gotta be there. There's, there's things that one of the partners um, that you know created the company was still there. So, and he's normally in Houston, you know. So I want to make a good impression by being at work. Um, <coughs> and and there was some other things going on. So I didn't need to be there. Well, I was there, and I was there about an hour and a half or so. And then I had to, um, and everybody was like, oh my God, you look terrible. And you sound terrible. I'm like, yeah, I'm just, just going to close my office door. I'm going to keep my germs in here. There's Lysol in the kitchen. Go get it. You know, I'm, I'm just going to stay right in here. And um, then I said, yeah, I have to be here. So then I called, I had to call my boss for something for someone. And got through what I had to say and then she was like you sound horrible do you feel horrible I'm like absolutely and she said go home I was like thank you lord so um I got to go home early and uh I literally went home um climbed into my jammies took Bella out climbed into my jammies got in the bed her and I got in bed and I just laid there I took my water with me my Kleenex um and then I signed up for that you know 30 day Walmart trial um, of their free delivery and everything. I know I'm being bad, but I signed up for it because I want, I needed stuff. I didn't have anything. So I signed up and uh, ordered soup and Kleenex puffs with lotion and Tayquil, NyQuil and you know, all the little things you need and had them deliver it to the house and some ice cream. Yes, I did. I got some little ice cream bars. Um, just because I knew I had to get something in me and stuff. And then I, I was in bed <coughs> until I got up to go to work Monday morning. So, yeah, I, that's how sick I was. And then Monday was better. Today I'm better. I, but the cough is worse. So, whatever. Everything goes to my, my chest. So, luckily I have a nebulizer. And so I used that last night. It makes me so shaky, though. But I used that last night. And then uh, it helped me so much because I was having like a coughing spasm that I just I couldn't breathe. So I used the nebulizer and then other than the shakiness, which it always does to me. Um, oops, you're coming there too. Um, yeah, it helped greatly and I got to go to sleep and the night quill cleared my head out and I actually slept all night last night. I was like, oh my gosh, I woke up and I'm like, what? The alarm woke me up? I'm not coughing or, you know, not able to breathe. This is awesome. So this is me on the road to recovery. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, um, that's that story. Um, tomorrow, <coughs> Wednesday, I have an appointment for Bella. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I'm so worried about her. I don't know if she's in pain. I don't know. Um, it's saying I gotta feed my fish. Um, I don't, I don't know if she's in pain, but she's not really eating, and I'm trying to give her, like, I started off with, you know, dog food, okay, no, she don't want it, so then I added in some, some wetter dog food, you know, thinking, oh, that meat kind of stuff would be good for her, so, I mean, make her want to eat good for her kind of thing, so, I got that, and that worked a little bit, but then she kind of left the food, and I've been giving her a scrambled egg in the morning, and she's been just eating a little bit. So she loves cheese. I was giving her some cheese. And yeah, some of the stuff, I don't know if it's absolutely the best for her, but I'm trying to get calories in her, you know? Um, her sweet potatoes, she's, she's really careful for right now. Um, green beans I put in there, she's eating that. Um, yeah, everything I could think of. She will eat her treats. You know, a few of those, so that's at least good. So I'm not thinking it's first. I was thinking it might be her teeth. Um, I don't see anything, but I'm thinking it. Well, maybe she's not chewing, so I got her the softer foods, but that didn't help. <coughs> and then she was eating her little treats. Now I did go and buy her. This is so weird, and I remember her doing this once before. I can't remember like the reasons around it because this is not her norm. Um, but I bought her this this biscuit bone. You know, about this big or whatever. But she loves it's a peanut butter bowl. 
And so I got her that a few days ago. And then I saw her, she just laid it on the, she, she grabbed it like she wanted it, but then it was laying on the floor. And that's when I first started thinking her teeth, maybe that's it. Um, but then she eats her little treats. So, okay. Um, but then yesterday when I got home, I saw her so, she was so sadly walking around the house this big old bone in her mouth, uh, biscuit bone, you know, edible thing, you know, um, in her mouth, and she was just like looking for someplace to hide it, and then she'd put it somewhere, and then she'd think about it, and she'd move it, it was almost like, I don't know if you remember that old commercial, and I forget what it was, for. it was for a bank or something, I think, but it was a dog, and he kept burying the bone, and then thinking, oh, that's not good enough, and then undicking it up, and then going and putting it somewhere else, oh, that's not good enough, she was doing that, and so I was like, she was in the guest room looking at her crate, so I opened her crate up, and I'm like, do you want to hide it in your crate? She didn't really care to, unless she did it when I wasn't looking. Um, but yeah, she was doing that behavior, and like I said, she'd done that once before, but I can't remember the circumstances of it. So I can't figure out what that behavior is. Um, and she doesn't really, she can hop off my bed, but she's more tentative right now. Um, when she does hop off of it, I don't hear, you know, or anything, like not a pain thing or anything, she just walks right away, but she's like more nervous about it, so I have to like try and carry her a bit off and then get her to the this bench that I have and then she hops down, um, she's not as like anxious to go outside at all, you know, I gotta be like, you gotta go outside and potty and then take her and she'll go and everything, but she's not like her normal like, come on, take me outside kind of thing, um, she can go up the stairs pretty well, but she looks nervous. I mean, that's weird to put that on a dog, but she looks kind of like tentative. She's tentative with walking um, down the stairs to get back into her house. So I kind of stand in front of her. And so her head hits the back of my legs and she's more comfortable with walking down the stairs. So I don't know what that's about. She's lost weight. Um, yeah, I'm really worried about her. So. Um, her appointment, I couldn't get into, I want to take her to her normal vet as long as I wasn't seeing like her having that breathing problem again or anything, or, you know, not that I see her looking like she's in immense pain or anything. I thought, okay, we'll wait and we'll go to her normal doctor who knows her. Um, so that's tomorrow. Um, so I'm hoping that, that we have a good outcome. <sighs> not ready to lose my dog, but, um. And then my parents all know what's going on with them, right? So anyway, my dad called today out of the blue. I haven't talked to him in about a week, so I get that. And, and I and I did look that they had called me at one point when I was sick, and I didn't answer the phone, but I turned my ringer off because I just wanted rest. Um, so, and I didn't see the notification. Um, but he called me at work, and he's like, why are you mad at us? And I'm like, what? what? You know, what? You haven't called us in like a month, and we haven't talked to you. And, and what are you mad about? What did we do to make you mad? I'm like, Dad, I'm not mad at anything. I've just been sick, and I've just been really busy. I haven't been talking to anybody. Just yeah, I just gotta get through this little hump here. Are you sure we didn't do something? No, Dad, we didn't. You didn't do anything to <laughs> try to reassure him. And then, then he's like, you were sick, and then my mom was in the background. I guess he had her on speaker in his car. And he's, my mom's like, you're sick. Why didn't you call us? Why didn't you call us when you need things when you're sick? And I'm like, well, I, I didn't need anything. I handled it. I was like, no, I, my mom's like, I don't do anything all day long. Do you know what it's like not to do anything all day long, every single day? And so if you need something, call us. I'm just like, oh, God. I, I think all the, always in terms of, <coughs> you know, I got to do things for myself. Um, you know, take care of myself, um, independent, uh, do, you know, I don't want to bother other people, that kind of stuff. It's not my first thought to go, oh, I'm sick and I need soup and stuff, so I'm going to call so-and-so to go get it for me. My first thought was I'm going to go and sign up for this service. I'm going to cancel before the 30 days and have them deliver the food to my house, uh, for no charge. And, um... Oh gosh, I love the sticker in front of me. Please be patient, student driver. Oh, you poor thing. Um, remember those days? Uh, but anyway, but so I'm always thinking that way, and I didn't put it into the terms of 
hey, they don't really do anything all day long. Mm, you know that one? That's the guy that was trying to get ahead of everybody. He's got a hot little car. Um, but he, uh, but you know, the thinking that maybe that that makes them feel valued and makes them feel needed and that's something that they need in their lives. And I wasn't even thinking, you know, putting myself in someone else's shoes. And uh, so then I said, okay, actually, you know what? I do need some help. I said, it's really hard for me to get Bella to the doctor in my car. Yeah, there's plenty of room in here and everything. But first of all, I have leather seats and it scares me with her nails that do need trimming uh, badly. I'm bad at that, I do admit. Um, but she she always wants to like climb up on the... Oh my goodness. To climb up here. Can you hear that car rubbing? Yeah. It's because we're stuck in this traffic for no... Oh, it's a stoplight up ahead. Okay. Um, I can't see it. I looked at the GPS. Anyway, I'm dying to see... I thought it was the car. Yeah, it is the car I thought it was. He's very anxious to get home. Uh, but anyway, she likes to climb up here to look out the window. She doesn't... I mean, she's tall enough to just stand there and look out the window, but no, she went, so I'm always afraid she's going to scratch everything, so I have this cover in the car that I have to install, so it's a pain in the tushy, but I do it, um, but then she's not a good traveler, she gets very anxious, she wants to come by me, and I'm like, no, I can't be, have you climbing on me and trying to sit on my lap when I'm trying to drive, she's too big for that, you know, and she won't just sit in the passenger seat, she wants to be by me, she tries to get through here and come on me, so it, it, it's, it's, it's very stressful to get to her doctor and go down the highway um, with her. So, um, my dad has a truck. And I said, well, you know what? What would really help me is if you, you know, have a doctor's appointment or anything. Because that's basically their life is doctor's appointments. But if you don't have a doctor's appointment or anything, you can help me get Bella to the doctor. That would be great. Because then I could sit in the back seat. She could sit on the floor in the back. And I could she could be right by me. And she could be comforted. And... You know, um, you can uh, pull. You can pull that seat up so she can just stand on his floor. That's the way his truck works somehow. Uh, and then he was joking, and he said, "Well, you know what? We got a cover for the back now. So I could put like a thin little air mattress in there, and you and Bella could just lay in there, and we'll drive you." And I was like, "Okay, yeah, no." Uh, <laughs> he was laughing while he was saying it, but um, I said, "No, but you and Mom can go camping then." He's like, "Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get your mom camping." But anyway, so he was joking. Um, but, but yeah, so they're going to And then I said, and if I get any bad news, you know, you'll be there. And I won't be by myself. And he goes, yeah, we'll hold your hand. <laughs> so anyway, so we're going to do that tomorrow. Um, this is my, my wonderfully exciting life that I'm letting you in on. Of um, that appointment. And then Thursday, I have a glaucoma doctor appointment to check up on my eyes, which I really need because I ran out of my medicine, I don't have the prescription to refill it, blah, 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 so yeah, I gotta get in there, and that's gonna be a huge doctor bill, it always is there, um, and I have a huge deductible on my insurance, so that's gonna be fun, but you just gotta do what you gotta do, right? So, that's my Thursday, isn't that exciting? Um... But Friday I have off, yippee, so maybe I can get some stuff done if I'm feeling better. Um, it's a good Friday, so happy Easter, happy early Easter to all of you all. Um, yeah, I can't believe it's already, it was a very short time between uh, St. Patrick's Day and, and Easter. Uh, I didn't decorate anything in my house for Easter, you know, it would feel good, but whatever. Um, <coughs> I do have a couple... Dollar Tree things. I keep forgetting to show you um, at my office. I'm my, I'm my office. Um, at my office, so you enter the main doors of our offices, um, and then there's my office behind the glass there. And uh, so you can see there, you see me in there. And so I have a Happy Easter sign on that glass wall, and then on my door I have another little one, and then on my desk I have a little stuffed. Easter gnome, Easter bunny gnome, Easter gnome bunny. Uh, but it was nice because when the partners were in and the, you know, the owners were in, uh, when we had a meeting and then we came upstairs back to our offices, and they were in my office, and I was thinking, oh man, are they going to get upset because um, 
mine's the only office that's like all decorated and family photos and all that. You've seen my videos. So I was like, is that an issue? And I thought, no, it shouldn't be because in Houston, everybody's like that. But in my office, nobody's like that. So but, they, but I, they, I walked in and they said, you know, this Easter stuff, they said, it just makes the place feel like home. Really like that. Thanks for doing that. So we felt good. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they like that. So I was excited. I decorated for that. Now I'm thinking, okay, what's next? All right. So the holidays are too long because when Easter's in April, then you can decorate through whatever day that is. And then you're close enough kind of to May that you can start decorating for like Memorial Day. Um, but this time you got all of April whole April of no holidays so I think I might put up like happy spring maybe some spring things spring things um so yeah I think maybe let me know what you think but I think I might go to Dollar Tree um over the weekend and maybe find some spring things if they have any left you know how they sell out for the holidays and get on to the next holiday they probably got Christmas up again <laughs> so it just feels like that doesn't it sometimes like oh my gosh um but yeah so there's that I have no plans for Easter. Um, I think my daughter's going to her in-laws, and then my son, you know, is in Knoxville, so that doesn't work. Um, and then the, in a quarter mile, turn left on East Centerville Road. Um, and then the brother that I don't get along with, um, he, uh, the mean brother, he, that's what my dad calls him, uh, he uh, uh, does the holidays, so used to be my thing, which is part of our issue. But anyway, uh, he used to do that, and he does that, so I don't go to that. Um, so I won't be doing At the light, turn left anything. on the East Centerville Road. I should probably start my own little tradition of doing something, but we'll see. Maybe I'll go to the movies. I might go to the movies. I've been to the movies in weeks. Um, but anyway, um, if you don't do anything with family, let me know what you all do for Easter. I mean, even if you do with family, I'd like to hear. I love hearing tradition. You know when there's a yellow arrow, you can go... Thank you, ma'am. Just a little reminder. It wasn't being mean. Just a reminder. Um, yeah, I'd like to hear your traditions. Mine used to be... Um, my, well, when I was a kid, uh, my mom's mom, grandma, she used to have the holidays. And, uh, <coughs> and so we'd go over there and she'd do like we're Polish she's Polish um so we'd have what's called fresh Polish sausage so fresh fresh sausage and she'd serve it cold um and then we do Polish sausage and she'd cook that and then serve that chilled and cut it in a like little pieces um what else did she do she did a lot of salad like potato salad um the regular not the German the regular or whatever um uh, salad we call macaroni salad which is good, but it's so bad for you. <laughs> and it's so easy, though. It's just macaroni noodles. And uh, we always use, um, oh, God, what was that brand we used? Cremette. Was it Cremette, the brand? I think. Um, yeah, just that noodles. And then mayo and some, like, onion powder. Yeah, just flavor. And that was it. My mom loves that. I make that for all the time. Um, we do that. Um, kidney bean salad we would have. That was easy. I love that. That's one of my dad's favorites. Um, and then um, deviled eggs, of course. And then regular hard-boiled eggs. And then we'd always have that thing of horseradish out. Horseradish. Horseradish. And the, um, on the hard-boiled eggs. That was good. I used to share, when I was a kid, I used to share the egg with my dad because I hated the white part of the hard-boiled egg. And my dad hated yellow part of hard boiled egg. So we made a great team. <laughs> um, but that was a nice little scooped out Mustang next to me. Uh, oh no, it's a Dodge. Sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, we have that. I can't remember what else we had. But that, that was, oh, ham. Always a ham. A nice honey baked ham or whatever. So we had that. And then, um, is there anybody over there? Um, so we had that. And then um, my grandma, she didn't really do like appetizers. Uh, I don't remember appetizers. She was big on the meal and then the desserts. But all of her desserts were teeny tiny. 
<laughs> my grandma was teeny tiny. My grandma was like my daughter, about five feet or so, um, skinny little thing. And so she made everything tiny. She, she made little teeny tiny cupcakes, you know, the really tiny small cupcakes that she put a little, um, she'd color it like green frosting and then she put little jelly beans on top, like a little nest. She made those. She'd make teeny tiny uh, cheesecakes. Yeah, she made everything tiny. Make little, little, she'd make a cake. Oh, she, oh yeah, the cake. Because my aunts used to make fun of her, but it didn't come out right all the time. But she had a mold, the mold that you make your cake in, and it was um, old Wilton brand. Remember the Wilton brand? It used to be a Wilton warehouse where I lived. I loved going there and all my cake baking supplies. I missed that. Anyway, um, so it was a stand-up mold of a lamb, and she would make that every year. And it was, you know, a lamb. And so you'd make it in the mold, and then she would pipe, you know, the, the fur all on it, and put little jelly bean eyeballs in the whole thing, and sometimes the, the eyeballs would be red or something, you know, she'd be a little crooked or something, so they always made fun of the lamb cake. The lamb cake. That was my grandma. The lamb cake. So we had that. Um, and then she would take the, um, the plastic eggs, you know, the kind you can pull in half. Now, I heard some people, I heard that down here, I guess, people would do Easter egg hunts with real eggs. Like, we would never have done that. We'd be like, I don't want no eggs. Um, we were bad, spoiled, uh, <laughs> because my grandma would do this, and she did not have money. She was a single mom for a long time, and she never drove. She never learned to drive, and so she would have to take, um, you know, public transportation if she was going anywhere, and my mom always brought me and my brothers to the house to take her food shopping and stuff, because she had no way to do that, and yeah, she did, but she, she was, and she was, oh, she was like strongly independent. Um, she would build things in her house. She bought her house. Wait a second, I'm dying of thirst. She bought her house. I've never heard of this before. It was partially done. So it was a new build, but to get it less expensively, they didn't do like the, um, what did they not do? Like the woodwork around everything and, and different different things weren't done inside the house that she did herself uh, to make the house, to finish the house. And her mom, my great grandma, would buy houses that were crappy shape and, and she was even tinier. She was even little, little strong little Polish woman. Um, and she would boss around my six foot great grandpa and they would redo the houses. I mean, she would literally be doing digging and plumbing and all that kind of stuff so I come from a, a line of these strong women but um so she so my grandma did all that kind of stuff and she would build things in her house and, and do all kinds of cool things so but she never had a lot of money so she did like factory work for a while I remember that um I remember her and my mom going and delivering like catalogs of different things and putting them on people's doorknobs. I remember having to go with them and do that. Um, she would sew. She was very good at sewing and so she would sew stuff for people as a side job. She did whatever she could to support her family. And um, so for her doing this for Easter was like, wow. She would save up money. And at that point it was, you know, pennies and nickels and dimes because you could buy stuff with that. And you can't even buy anything with that now. But you could buy stuff with that. So she would get the plastic eggs and she would fill them with money um, and she would put some candy in them and then she would hide them around the house and it was always hysterical because no matter how many people were involved in the hiding, like us kids, we'd have to go in another room and then the eggs would get hid and then we'd come out and they, they knew how many they hid and they'd divide it by the kids and tell us how many we each got so it was even. Uh, but the, it never failed every single day in year. They'd hide the eggs. We'd all search for the eggs. And then we'd be like, I only have three or whatever it was, you know. They only have this many. And they're like, so there's this many still left. Help us. And they'd all look at each other like, I don't remember where they are. Did you get that one? Oh, you did. That one. Oh, you, ooh, I don't. They never remembered. I was always like, write it down or something, y'all. This is not rocket science. It's hiding Easter eggs. 
I was a kid. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so she do that. That was so much fun. And y'all got to do that and find out. Oh, so oh, cows. There's cows. We got cows. You know, that's from. We got. I can't talk now. We got cows. Okay. Squirrel. Cow. Um, but yeah, so that was like the, the best part of the whole day was, was that. And then, yeah, that was so cool. So that was my Easter as a kid. And then after that, when my grandma no longer wanted to do the holidays and none of my aunts really wanted to, I took over, um, the holidays for our family and stuff. So, um, I did Easter and I kind of kept the same traditions my grandma did. Um, yeah, all these years. Um, and then I would do the eggs. Me and my mom would. My mom started doing the eggs because she's like, you paid for everything for Easter. You know, the food and all that. And um, I'm crazy when it comes to um, that kind of stuff. You know, it's, uh, I was making sure I was recording all this time. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a kick in the station? Um, I do not know where I am. I'm so glad my GPS knows where we are. Um, anyway. I go kind of crazy, so um, I do tons of appetizers, yeah, um, let's see, pigs and blankets, um, we do this salami thing that I did for the mean brother all the time, see, I was nice, um, but it's just um, cream cheese and dry mustard, blah, 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 and you mix it all up, and then you put it inside of a piece of salami and you roll it up into a little... It looked like the bugles. Remember that that chip, the bugles? It looked kind of roll it up, kind of like that. And so I made those, and just I mean, uh, barbecue meatballs. I had those. Um, I would buy the um, uh, pizza pop things for the kids. Um, taquitos. I think that's how you say it. I um, and the, I mean, just, yeah, tons of stuff. So I'd have a full table full of appetizers. And then, then I would come out with the same kind of stuff my grandma did for the main course. And then I would have a whole bunch of desserts. And everybody was like, you always make too much food. We're so full. I'm like, okay, then I did a good job. Because um, <laughs> my grandma would always be like, don't you want some more? Don't you want here? Half there, ten more. My grandma were bald. Um. So yeah, I wanted to continue that tradition too. Um, but yeah, and so and then we do the the eggs, and I would write it down because I didn't. Want to. And then when my son got older, and then it was my brother's kids who were little. My son's kind of tall, so he was so he's such a pain in my tushy. He would hide things super freaking high, and I'd be like, Nick, the kids can't get that. And he's like, Oh no, it's funny. So as soon as they'd see the thing, he'd get it for them. But, you know, he put it, like, on the ceiling fan. Like, what kid's going to get some off the ceiling fan? You know, stuff like that. He just thought it was hysterical. Um, he would hide things on his grandma. Like, my mom would be sitting on the couch, you know, to watch the kids do this. And he'd be like, Grandma, sit still. And he'd put something, like, in her hair or something for them to find. Or in her purse or out of it. Just, yeah, he's a goofball. Um, but we had lots of fun doing that stuff. And then later it became a tradition on Easter that we'd go... Um, well, no, it started earlier than that. It started back home when my grandma was still around. That's true. It did. It started when we were younger. Not young, young, but younger. Um, before I had kids, after I had kids, I'm not sure. But we'd go golf carting. So we'd eat all the food and everything, rest up a little bit, and then we'd go to the golf cart. Not golf cart. Go karting. Not golf carting. Go karts. We'd go ride go karts. And that was fun. And we continued that here for a long time, too. It was one not far from my house. But yeah, that was so much fun. So that was our tradition. Um, as far as Easter Bunny, uh, Easter Bunny always visited us. And um, I got, my kids got huge baskets of things in there. Um, it was normally candy and, and inexpensive. Um, and uh, the Easter Bunny, for him, everything was cheap, but... It was never like major things in her Easter basket. It was smaller things. Like for me, it was jewelry or um, socks or, you know, when I got a little older, it was like, you know, nylons or, you know, stuff like that. Um, for the boys, it was a lot of like carp things or it'd be little toys or, yeah, all things like that. And so it continued on. And then my son, 
uh, didn't like candy anymore, and so the East End Money figured that out and started putting like chips and stuff in his, which was hysterical. But yeah, so that that was our tradition. Oh, and the Easter Bunny for us. I don't know if he does this for everyone or not, but the Easter Bunny for us always hid our baskets. Hid them. So we'd have to search the entire house to try and find where our Easter baskets were. And then once we found it, we had to sit and wait until all the siblings found their Easter baskets. And then we could open them up and you know, show everybody what we got. So um, I remember one year, my son was looking all over. He, he found an Easter basket and he's like, darn it, it's Danny's. That's my daughter. He's like, it's hers. And I'm like, well, don't tell her, let her find it. So she found hers. And then he's like, I can't find mine. And then he kind of got all bummed. And he was like sitting on the couch. And I can't find mine. I've, I've looked everywhere. I can't find it. And then my daughter was like, I'll help you, Nick. They're seven years apart. So she was little. And he's like, I'll help you, Nick. And then she went searching. And she's like, comes back laughing. He goes, Nick, yours is in the garbage. And then the Easter Bunny had hid it in the garbage can. So that's why he couldn't find it. But yeah, he'd get all mad. And she had to help him find his Easter Bunny. And then when I was young, a really cool memory I have was I was searching all over. We were renting this three-story house. We had a basement that was above ground, you know, like a nice basement with nice windows. This house was awesome. Um, my parents hated it. I loved the house. Uh, but as a kid. Um, but, and then there was a uh, first story and then the attic was built where you could actually go up there and had secret rooms and stuff. It was the coolest house. There was a piano in the basement. I used to sit on the piano and play it with my toes. I couldn't play the piano. Um, but anyway, so I'm searching. Oh, and it had a back screen in patio and a yard. It was just cool. And it was behind the house, the alley. And then behind there was a little industrial park. And that's where my dad had his business. So he could, like, you know, walk to work. So it was pretty cool. But anyway, um, I searched and searched. And I found my Easter basket finally. But then there was a string on it. And I was like, what is this string? So followed the string forever, and then on the back porch, there was a puppy tied to the string. So the Easter Bunny not only gave us an Easter basket, but he gave us a puppy. So we got a puppy for Easter. It wasn't the coolest. It was just me and my brother at that time. Um, I had to be, I don't know, five. Well, we moved when I was nine. So it was between the years of five to nine is when we lived in that house. Um, yeah, it was... That was pretty cool. This is a memory that's stuck in my head. I am in this traffic. So, like, I am five miles from my house, and right now it says 11 minutes to get there. And I'm talking, I'm on a highway, and it's still 11 minutes to go five miles. Yes. Oh, that was a bad word you said. Sorry. I hope you didn't hear that. Um, radio was louder than I thought. Um, so, yeah, that was a great memory. So love to hear your memories if you have something really special that was a special one i have to bring that back every once in a while I'll remember that like that was really cool um but yeah so that that was that was our easter easter traditions and i'm a tradition person so it was really hard to give up those traditions when things happen to my family but um yeah i i wanted to keep them all i wanted to keep the same recipes from my grandma and my great grandma I wanted to keep you know all the same little traditions and and I would add to them like I said I had you know, appetizers at my party or maybe I try I would try different salads I would always have the the traditional ones the one I really liked and my ex sister-in-law um has been in contact with me so I'm so glad to hear from her and her daughters it's awesome but anyway um she um she loved this so I always had to make it for her but um, I just found it, and I'm like, I'm going to try that. And it was something, I got to make it again. It was so good. Um, but it was like cheese tortellinis, and you cook them. And it was an Italian thing, so you put it in there, and it was like pieces of pepperoni in it. And, oh, God, what else was in there? Artichokes were in there. And, like this make an Italian type of a dressing kind of thing. It wasn't a mix. You know, it had a recipe. But, I mean, and, oh, and pieces of chunks of cheese in it and oh it was so good olives were in there so good anyway so i would add every year you know every holiday i would add a different like salad or a different dessert or something a little different and see how it went over and then yeah i would continue it 
if it was liked and if it wasn't then I would try something different and same with my appetizers I had my traditional ones that I knew certain people loved and then I'd have the other ones but yeah it was it was, it was fun I loved doing that it was my way of being feeling you know value and worth and everything in the family that here's what I'm offering to contribute to the family um because I you know I love my family and I want to show that and that was my way so now that I can't do that anymore it's like party is like gone but um yeah continue on so I'll have to find something new for myself something something new um like for my birthday you know, we used to do parties and stuff and you know that's kind of down too so um I started planning a trip on my birthday so this is the first year in quite a while to being unemployed and all that, that I didn't, didn't travel on my birthday. My head's getting stuffy again, and I didn't take my 430 day quill. Huh? So, anyway, um, I probably should let you go so you don't have to hear this. But um, I'm almost home. Now it's nine minutes. Uh, but yeah, uh, you don't know what I was just saying. Oh, yeah, so starting new traditions is cool, and continuing old traditions is great too. You know, they both have. They both have meaning and purpose, so yeah, sometimes I'll start a new one and sometimes I want to keep the old one, you know? <laughs> so like one new one we started was as a kid I didn't like I didn't like having to go to um, family stuff on Christmas Eve and, and leave our house and then also leave our house all day Christmas so I couldn't play with any of my new toys or anything because we had to go to other family stuff because we had three families, you know, horses and stuff and it was just like no so I said I hated that so much that when I had kids I said nope I'm going to do the Christmas Eve thing with everybody that's great and luckily well, luckily or unluckily by that time like um, my dad's parents had moved to southern Illinois so you know that that part of the thing was taken away and then my grandfather who would always have the, the Leah which is a Polish Christmas party or Polish party I don't know call it the Belia. Um, he did that. He stopped doing that by the time my kids were older. You know, my kids were around. So um, it was easier to just say, I'm going to do Christmas Eve with the family and my grandma and my mom's family and everything. And then Christmas Day, my kids would open their gifts and everything and they'd play with them for a while. And then in the afternoon, we'd pick a movie that they, we all wanted to see. We'd go see a movie. And so do the popcorn and the candy and all that thing. And then come back and they'd have more time with their toys. They really enjoyed that. We kept that tradition up forever. So that was a cool new tradition on top of the old traditions. So, yeah. so let me know anything if you want to about your traditions because I love that and love learning about different people. I also love to learn what's like a tradition in your family that maybe has to do with your, what is it? It's not the word, ethnicity, but your, from where your family comes from. You know, like we're Polish, your nationality. Um, is there something with your nationality? That's a tradition on the holidays. Is there something with your ethnicity, whatever, you know, or religion or whatever? Um, that's something special that you do because of who you are. Um, who you are, how you're made, how you go through life. Um, I love learning about that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. So I know some of you are, some of you, that's why grandpa used to always say that. She probably wax and use use guys <laughs> Grandpa. Um, but I know I have my, my Swedish lady um, I've got some people in Canada i got some people everywhere in Europe I a couple of you in Europe so is there something you do um, that's traditional to your country that I don't know about so it's cool let me know if you if you want to leave a comment let me know I don't do that to say you know leave me a comment so I look it on YouTube I don't care about that I do, but I don't, you know, um, I read my comments, I respond to my comments, so I really am interested in the questions that I ask you, <laughs> so, um, if you take the time to write me a comment, I will definitely take the time to read it and respond to it, even if it's just the red heart, the red heart's for me, um, I see my house across the water, I just gotta get there, I bet you. Uh, so I'm almost home. I'm going to let you go while my head is stuffing up. And uh, I hope you had an amazing Tuesday. And uh, I hope you have great plans for Easter. And if you don't, um, if you're thinking about you, you think about me. And we'll celebrate together here. here. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, love y'all. And, uh, yeah, thank you.
Thank you for getting me 2,000. Thank you for letting me talk to you while I'm driving and so I don't look like a crazy person just talking to myself. Well, I probably do look like that, but I know y'all are sitting over there. I don't know how all thousand of you fit in that seat, but it's okay. It's cool. We share, we're a community. We help each other. It's cool. Um, but uh, and if you haven't subscribed and you do like my channel, please take a minute to hit that little subscribe button. And that's all the business I will do with you today. <laughs> so, um, 